Hi, Odyssey Camper here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about this nano solar kit that I made using a small 50 watt solar panel and a battery jump pack. The goal of the project is to show how you can build something that's similar to a Yeti Goal Zero 400 for uh, about a third the price. That's including the solar panel. But before I do that, I wanted to thank everyone that subscribed on YouTube. Um, I really appreciate it. I've got like 7,000 views, which blows my mind. And uh, originally when I set this up, I just did it for some friends to show them how they could get out and see the country without spending a lot of money, without investing in an RV. And uh, got real favorable response. I've also got um, people reposting on Facebook, on their Facebook groups. I really appreciate that. Um, and if you like the videos, I'd appreciate it if you if you do that. Uh, by all means, share them. I mean, I want people to learn how to do this and save themselves a lot of money and have fun in the in the process. And so, the more people that can see it, the better. So, moving on with things. I originally shot this as a uh, DIY do-it-yourself video, and then I realized uh, when I watched the video and did the the editing that it was so damn boring. <laughs> <laughs> Watching someone assemble electronic parts is pretty dull. Uh, so what I want to do instead is film this little intro uh, here and uh, just show you the components. And, and most of you are going to go, oh, okay, I see how it goes together. I can do that. That's no problem. Uh, and that'll be enough for you. If you want to go into the DIY, that's at the end of the video. And I'll show you how I soldered everything together and what connectors I used. Uh, the parts list is down at the bottom. Uh, so if you look in the comment section or above the comment section, you'll see that. Uh, there are links to everything on Amazon, but things like this jump pack you can buy elsewhere. Uh, and then in the middle, I compare a couple of different jump packs. Uh, so I like the Sears Die Hard uh, 1150 unit, but this Schumacher unit does almost everything that it does for a lot less. We're talking, well, I paid $70 less on retail for this than you would for a Die Hard. Uh, there's a couple caveats. So if you watch past this intro, you'll see the comparison, um, and then it gets into the DIY section. So what am I holding? I'm holding the Schumacher jump pack. This has a built-in 18 amp hour battery. It also has an inverter, has a USB charger, um, it has a, an air compressor, it can jump start a car. So it does like everything you'd need on the road except charge itself. If you're going to be parked for a while, uh, it's a good, good idea to have a, a solar panel set up. So on the back of this 50 watt solar panel you can see where I've wired in a charge controller. This is a 7 amp, uh, actually a Schumacher brand charge controller, which is ample for recharging these battery packs. Uh, the nice thing about the Nano Solar is it recharges quickly because you don't have a lot of reserve capacity. However, I'll show you later on in the video how you can increase the reserve capacity of these by just uh, adding a battery. Um, and you'll still be able to use this 50 watt solar panel to, to recharge. So in about uh, an hour, I was able to bring the Die Hard battery pack from 81% up to uh, 100%, and I'll show you that later in the video. This panel works quite well. It comes in aluminum frame. Again, there are links to uh, Amazon. You can acquire all this stuff on Amazon. You might want to check the Sears site directly when it comes time to buy the battery pack if you decide on the Die Hard unit. So later in this video, I'm going to uh, show you a comparison between the different battery packs. I'll also show you this uh, solar unit recharging the battery pack, and then I'll get into the DIY, DIY section for people that want to do that. Again, thank you very much for your subscriptions. Thank you for your shares on social media, uh, on Facebook especially. I notice people post things to the Facebook groups, and I really appreciate that. Helps to get the word out on how you can get out on the road for a lot less. Uh, you know, if you wait your whole life to plan for buying that giant RV, that giant RV just keeps growing in size with the features that you want. And, Eventually you realize that geez, I'm gonna be you know retired by the time I can get out on the road And then I'm not gonna be able to go do the trails and things like that. So um, Hopefully these videos show people how they can get out uh, By themselves or with a you know a couple of people and uh, enjoy enjoy life. All right. Thanks again for watching So while I was putting together the solar panel for this project I decided to see if there was a if there was another battery pack out there that would do something similar for less and I came across this Sch Schumacher unit I'll put a link down in the notes um, so you can find this. I got this off of Amazon. And what's interesting is uh, this was $150 new. I got it at a pawn shop for, I think, $60. So um, I got a pretty good deal there. But I went and looked at the Schumacher unit, and it was priced at $109. There's a special uh, Amazon coupon, and I actually got it for $80 bucks delivered to my door. I thought that was a pretty good deal. And once I started looking at it, I noticed a lot of similarities, but some major differences. 
So for similarities, you have a, a work light at the top here. So just like the power pack, you get three white LEDs, similar brightness. So that's the same. You have a digital readout for the battery level, just like you have a digital readout over here for the battery level. But what you don't have over here is an output for the air compressor. The air compressor actually has an old school dial on the back. You see that? Um, so you can't set it to a certain pressure and then just let it go on its own like you can with a diehard unit. That may or may not be important to you. Uh, one thing you do gain with the Schumacher unit is this little port up here which is designed to inflate an airbed. comes with a little hose. So that's a low pressure, uh, high volume for filling an air mattress. And then you also have the air compressor just like on the diehard unit. I pulled the battery and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, it has the same battery as the diehard unit, so the same amount of reserve power. There are two 110 outlets, there are two 12 volt outlets. Uh, the diehard has two USB chargers, where the Schumacher only has one. They both have the same jump start capability and the same power for the jump start. Uh, here's one major difference, in my opinion, the, the most important one. The Schumacher Instant Power only has a 200 watt inverter. So they're saying uh, 300 watt peak, uh, 200 watt inverter in the documentation, where the diehard is a full 400. So whether or not you have anything that big, that might make a difference. Um, I don't think that would dissuade me from buying the Schumacher because I could just plug in another, you know, small unit like this. <coughs> Excuse me. I could just plug in a unit like the small uh, sine wave, full sine wave inverter, or something cheaper. You can get a 400 watt inverter for probably 20 bucks now. Uh, so that may not be a deal breaker for you. The nice thing is uh, these are readily available on Amazon. The diehards are a little f harder to find on Amazon, but you can always find one of the Sears if you still have a Sears nearby. Uh, Kmart might carry them. I haven't checked. Kmart carries a lot of the Sears brand items. Uh, both of them can be charged with our solar panel. So just like the diehard unit, I can plug right into here with my solar panel and charge directly. There's one last thing I'll say about these battery packs. When you first get it, it's covered with these stickers that say charge for 36 hours. Charge immediately after purchase for 36 hours. And then somewhere else it says charge every 30 days. At charge after every use and every 30 days. So if you go online, you read the reviews of these, people say, oh, it worked great for a couple months, and then I went to use it and it was dead. Well, you got to charge it every 30 days. That's not really a problem if you've got a solar panel or if you've got it plugged in, in your, to a charger someplace in your car, in your vehicle. But uh, it is kind of a concern when you throw it in the garage, you throw it in the trunk, and don't use it for months. So just be aware of that. Uh, treat it right when you first get it for a long battery life, and then charge it every 30 days. Um, similar weight. Get some each to be about 25 pounds, although I didn't look it up, but at least that's what it feels like to me. Um, the plastic is similar. I don't think anyone's more likely to crack than the other. The Schumacher has a, an extra panel on the bottom, kind of skids on the bottom of it that protect the, the plastic, but I don't think it's inherently any stronger than the other one. So there's two options for uh, alternatives to the Goal Zero. The, the main thing you lose when you go to something like this uh, other than saving hundreds of dollars, um, when you go to the Die Hard or the Schumacher battery pack, you only have 18 amp hours of uh, battery power. And I believe the Goal Zero 400 is 33 amp hours, if I remember right. So there's a simple solution to that. If you decide you don't have enough reserve power in these, you can buy a replacement battery. And those batteries are 22 amp hours. But you're not going to replace the battery in here. What you're going to do is plug it into one of the 12 volt connections here and add an auxiliary battery. So this can be mounted in your vehicle someplace. Um, and then you can plug into your, your Schumacher charger. But uh, one thing to, to watch for when you do something like that, if you're planning on expanding your battery, uh, you should probably do it up front. So buy the battery in the beginning. Uh, the batteries are, are going to last longer if they're charged and discharged the same way. So if you do plan on increasing the capacity, it's a good idea to buy that battery at the same time. And I'll put links to all this down in the notes. Uh, as I've said before, you can get a lot of this stuff on Amazon. Check the prices. 
check the local prices. Um, your auto parts store might have something like the Schumacher, the Die Hard at Sears. Uh, oftentimes, Amazon's not the best deal. It was a smoking deal for this when I bought it. I went back a few days later, and it was higher than the original price. I think it was $120. I took apart the Schumacher jump pack just to see what kind of battery is inside and it's exactly the same kind of battery as in the Sears Die Hard unit. It's an 18 amp hour, uh, same size battery that can be replaced with the 22 amp hour. So no advantage there as far as the battery goes. Uh, they're both internally same amount of power. I tried to do this project as simply as possible uh, not using any soldered connections or whatnot, but connecting to the solar panel, you still need to do a little bit of soldering to do it right. So if you don't have the equipment to solder or you're not practiced at it, uh, your best bet is probably to go to a place that repairs cell phones, replaces the screens and batteries and whatnot. They'll often have someone there that can solder and they can do this uh, first step for you. But once that step is done, you can do the rest of it yourself. So, okay, to get started, Prior to soldering onto these connections here, what we're going to want to do is make sure the panel is face down or you have cardboard over the panel. You don't want the panel to be generating energy while you're in there sticking your fingers around. It's not enough to, in my opinion, to harm you, but um, you don't want to short anything out. So make sure the panel isn't producing any electricity and now we can go in and do some soldering. So the first thing I'm going to do is tin the connections on my plug connector. So I've got this plug connector that we're going to run in here. And this end is ground. You can see the black wire going in there, so it doesn't matter that we're exposing that right now. The positive is insulated. Uh, but right now it's not connected to anything, so just stick it in a little uh, vise to hold it here. And I want to tin the wires, and that's going to make it easier to make our mechanical connection later on. So a little bit of solder on the iron there to get the heat flowing. Heat up the wire. Feel a little bit of solder in there. Great. I had to grab my bifocals for this next part. So I'm going to bend over the tip of each of these wires. I don't know how well this will show up in the video, but essentially there's a little hole here in the connector and I want to use that to make a good mechanical connection before I solder. I'm going to just stick these wires into the hole, bending over the end. All right, now that I've got these two wires in place and I've bent over the bottom of the wire, I'm just going to close the crimp lug on them, or I guess it's a, not really a crimp lug, but just squeeze the connector here. Okay, So now I've got a good mechanical connection and that would actually probably hold I've got it on there so well but that's not the way you want to do this. You want to solder it for the best current flow but also uh, to make sure that that never comes loose. So I got my soldering iron again. Make sure we're tinned up for heat transfer. Actually I'm going to turn that up a bit for this step. So when you solder, quick soldering lesson, what you want to do is transfer the heat to the material. Uh, so you put a little glob of solder on there and you touch it onto the material, but what you're actually doing is trying to heat up that metal. And you're going to feed the solder in at a different spot once that metal gets hot enough. So let me get that going. we got a big lug there, so it's going to take a lot of heat to do it. And then we're going to just flow the solder into the connection not necessarily where the wire is touching. And repeat over here, which you might actually be able to see a little bit better. A little glob of solder just to get the heat going. And then we're going to flow the solder in at the joint down here. And when you're done, you should have a shiny connection there. So at this point, I'll go back and I'll clean up a little bit of the, get the flux off of there. Uh, the flux is the acid core, rosin core that's in the solder, and that's what uh, helps the, the solder to stick to the metal. But right now we've got a very good mechanical connection. Still, I don't want, if someone pulls on these cables, I don't want it to um, stress these connections. So what I'm going to do is put a little strain relief on these by zip tying the wire in place. I'll just feed a zip tie under each one of these. 
cable tie depending on what part of the country you're from. Now there's a couple ways you could do a strain relief here. You could knot the end of the wire and then solder it in place or you could use a zip tie. The main thing is you want to make sure that uh, if anyone pulls on that cable it's not going to pull against this connection and damage anything. We'll just crank down on them a little, get them a little tighter. Clip the end off. You don't actually have to clip it that close because you want this to be a strain relief so you might as well just leave a little bit extra on there. Alright, at that point we can tighten down the, the nuts. There's a little uh, rubber gasket in here and as you tighten it down it compresses it and squeezes onto the wire to make that a weather tight seal. Depending on the, the type of connector you buy, if you buy the ones from Amazon or whatnot, you may have to add a little piece of heat shrink tubing to make this wire big enough for that to properly clamp down on and form a weather tight seal. I don't plan on getting the panel wet, but it's nice to know that if it does, it's covered. And we'll just close this access door. Now, you probably can't see this in the video, but these are labeled negative and positive to make sure you have the, the right sides. All right, so at this point, I'd say we could go ahead and connect to our solar charge controller. But depending on the source you read online, people actually advise you to uh, not connect this to the uh, solar panel until you've connected it to the battery. And it has to do with the processor in some of these. Uh, a lot of them are powered by the battery, and so you want to give it a second to boot up or whatever, I don't know, to run the, the internal program, and then connect it to the solar. I don't think it matters with these, but we're going to go with the protocol. Now, if you have a, a digital controller, you have something like this that's microprocessor controlled, it's probably more important than on these little Schumachers. Uh, I think these are, are non-microprocessor, but either way, we're going to do it the right way and we're going to unpackage this, then connect to our battery pack, and then connect to our solar panel. We'll pull this out. A note about the wiring on these. When you look at these connectors, the bare connector is not always ground. Uh, sometimes it's positive, so you have to be careful when you connect these. Our solar panel is going to connect in here. And when we do that, we want to make sure that red goes to red and black goes to black. And I took this apart to ensure that this is the case, but if you look at the wire color here, uh, black's on this side and that follows all the way down, and the same with the red. So on this middle part, uh, this part is actually positive and this part is negative. And when I look at this one, this part is negative and this part is positive. And then when I look over here, this is positive and this is negative. We're not going to use this. This is the load side. And if you want to connect a small load to a solar panel uh, while it's charging, you can use this connector. I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, we're just going to use these two. And so the one that says solar is going to connect here. And when I do connect it, you'll see it's polarity protected. Um, the red wire is going to go to this side and the black wire is going to go to this side. And so it'll have the proper uh, polarization. Next step. We're going to connect to the battery first, so we need to plug our 12 volt adapter in here. And I'll notice on this thing, it actually has red on this side, so it's positive on this side. So I'm going to have to make a connection change there. So I had to make a little adjustment to my plans. Once I took a close look at this connector, I realized the polarity, <coughs> polarity was wrong. So what I've done is I've cut the cable and reversed the polarity. And then I'm going to slide a couple pieces of heat shrink tubing over that so no one will get confused about the color coding. Slide that up there. And then we'll put a larger piece over, over it when we're done. So I'll go ahead and heat shrink those. So now that we've got the polarity corrected on a 12 volt plug, I can go ahead and plug this into the battery pack. Note that I'm using a diehard battery pack. Uh, it's the 1150 portable power, but actually I'm going to go back and shoot another video with the Schumacher battery pack because I think it's a slightly better. Yeah, it's also $60 cheaper than the diehard unit. So watch that in the upcoming video, but this method will work with either battery pack. So if I take a look at this and I just check the battery level, it says I'm at about 81% battery. Put that again. All right. So when we're done here, we'll see what we're at. So I'll go ahead and plug this into the 12 volt connector and close the inverter one. Make 
Okay, that's in there good and secure. We see the LED light light up on the plug, meaning that there's voltage there. Now I'm going to plug into the charge controller. So again, this is going to go to the battery part of it. Flip that over. Connect the charge controller. That's interesting. I don't see any lights on that yet, which probably means that uh, it's not powering off the battery pack. It's going to power off the solar. That would be my guess. So again, it probably doesn't matter which one you do first, but that's what everybody says to do. All right, so now we're going to plug in red to red, black to black on the solar side. Sometimes these connectors are a little harder to put together. There we go. All right, so we should be able to bring the solar panel out in the sun, see what it'll do. So I'm outside northern latitude, I'm up in Michigan in November. So we're getting a little bit of sun, uh, probably not as much as we'll get in the summer. But the yellow light's on, so we can definitely see that we're charging on the charge controller. Later on we'll attach that to the back of the panel, I just wanted to keep it out in the open so it was easy to see. So let's give it an hour and see how much charge we get. After an hour on the 50 watt solar panel, back from 81% to full charge, I went ahead and turned on the inverter on here just so I could put a little bit of load on the battery and make sure I wasn't getting a false reading. But keep in mind that these meters on the power packs are not completely accurate. So you know, if you do the math out and you go, wow, there's no way you could be 100%, it's gotta be 98.2. The, uh, the meters aren't that accurate, but close enough to prove that our solar panel is charging and we can get it back to 100%. Now keep in mind that that was afternoon sun, so it's November. I'm in Michigan right now, so it's a higher latitude. And uh, it's uh, late afternoon, so I ran this for an hour on the charger between 3 and 4 p.m. Uh, so really, other than clouds, um, it was a nice clear blue sky. It wasn't the ideal circumstance, but good enough to prove a point that you don't have to buy a Yeti Gold Zero to get almost all the benefits and plus a couple extras uh, with a do-it-yourself kit that's under $200. The last step of this project is a little optional. Um, what I'm going to do is connect the charger module to the solar panel and I'm going to use 3M trim adhesive. This is automotive trim adhesive. If you've never used this stuff before, it's, it's awesome. Uh, basically, it's used to hold on automotive trim. It'll survive desert heat, freezing climate. You just want to make sure when you apply it that it's over uh, 70 degrees or so for it to stick. So I put a few strips on the back of the charge controller. Just peel the backing off of that. And then stick it in place. And that is going nowhere. So there's a little bit of space under there for a little bit of ventilation, although the charge controller doesn't really need it. Um, it'll stay on even if the panel gets hot in the sun. We've got our wires here. It's actually low profile enough that if you were to put a backing panel on this, uh, you can close the entire thing and it wouldn't... Uh, you know, it wouldn't be in the way. You could also set this panel against a, you know, something flat. Um, I'll probably put a stand on it and end up using it to charge my battery pack. And I'll also have it up in the windshield, uh, hopefully at RTR, charging uh, my larger battery pack that I'm making right now. But if you just want the capability to be able to charge a battery pack similar to a Yeti Gold Zero, Gold Zero, this is uh, this is what you want. Well, I hope you found this video useful and learned something, and uh, if not, I hope it inspired some ideas so you can go out and build your own system. Again, this is a nice way to do something similar to the Yeti Gold Zero 400, uh, with the exception of the battery capacity, without having to spend $600 for the, the uh, Yeti and the solar panel. Uh, here we spent uh, less than $200, and we got almost all the capability, plus we have a self-rescue capability in the jump pack where we can jump our vehicle, we can jump start somebody else's vehicle, and we've got an inverter built in, a few other options, um, but we also have a, an air compressor. So uh, as far as I know, the Yeti Gold Zero 400 does not have an air compressor, and it does not have jump start capability. 
So you give up a little bit in battery power unless you add the auxiliary battery, but you gain the other tools. So all in all, I think uh, these are a better way to go. Thanks for watching, and uh, give you a little preview of my next video. Pick up the tripod here. Working on a little project with my console and the Honda Odyssey Phase 2 project. There, if I can point that up there. There we go. Let you think about what might be going on there.